give him a doll, let him dress in a skirt. Oh, you know, like that guy that was the uh, secretary of uh, the nuclear waste. Yeah. You remember him yeah. running around stealing luggage and clothes and stuff with a bald head and the skirt and the red lipstick. They just indicted him. That's what they want. That's their plan for your children. You can't believe them they got what's best in mind for you. Oh, well, they wouldn't do that here. We're in Sweetwater. We're in East Tennessee. When was the last time you went to a PTA meeting? When was the last time you looked at curriculum? When was the last time you paid attention to what was going on? It may be better here, but I promise you it's far from perfect. Yeah, amen, 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 amen. That old crazy preacher. Hey, all the women there in were with child when he ripped up. You say, what is that? Well, that's nothing new. The Japanese did it in World War II over there in the, in the Philippines. They'd toss, a, they'd toss the baby up in the air and then catch him on the bayonet. You say, that's, you're a crazy preacher. You just need to read history. You know what they don't teach in school no more? History. <laughs> That was a class that I had to take to graduate. It was Americanism versus communism. It was a required course. You had to have that before you could graduate. They don't teach it no more. They just teach social science, history, you know, watered down history. That, well, amen. I'll have you mad with me before if I started really telling you about history. But anyway, verse 19, in the ninth and thirteenth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Began Menham, the son of Gadi, to reign over Israel. And he reigned 10 years in Samaria. Now what you're going to find is this is, this is the end reign. Uh, when we go through Kings here, as we're getting down through this, you'll see it gets worse and worse and worse. And then finally they go into captivity. Nebuchadnezzar comes in and takes him and takes him off into Babylon, kills the most of them. And takes them off into Babylon. Why? It's the destruction of a nation. What you're seeing here. Now listen to me. What you're seeing is the destruction of a nation. You want to know how God looks at nations. And our nation is just like any other nation. Got me? I'm going to say that again. Our nation. I know it's the red, white, and blue. And, bah, 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 and all that. But our nation is just like another nation. And when any nation turns against God. It is destined by its own course of action to end up just like this. I don't like it any more than you do, but friend, I am not going to say something that ain't true, and it's true. Amen. So what we find here is we'll see the devolving of man. Now we're at the point. Now notice how, how far we have come from Solomon and King David. King David Solomon, you had a united kingdom. There was peace on all sides. There was prosperity. The queen of Sheba comes up and talks to Solomon and says, man, I can't believe I've heard the stories, but man, just a half has not been told. He said, even your servants which stand in your presence are happy, fat, and fed, and clothed well. You know what that is? That's a sign of a good economy. That's a sign of people that are prosperous. That's the sign of people that are, are, uh, are unified and moving in one direction. You know what that is? That's America in the 20s and 30s. Amen. Solomon had a strong military. He had peace on all sides. How did he get it? Well, through Reaganomics. He got how he got it. What's that? Uh, peace through a strong military. Peace through strength. That's right. Uh, you want to you have peace, you have strength. If you've got a bully on the block, and that bully goes up and down that block, and Bo can testify to this. I remember Daddy giving an illustration one time about it. You have a bully that goes up and down the block, and he's beating up on every kid. Right? And he beats up every kid on that block. Then all of a sudden, one of those kids says, you know what? This guy's wearing us out every day. So why don't we get together and we'll take care of him? In other words, peace through strength. In other words, and then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, five of those boys says, yeah. 
So you get five boys, and that bully comes down there, and he decides he's going to bully everybody, and all five jump on him. Now, I don't care who you are. I don't care how bad you are. I don't care how big you are. You get five grown men on you, son, and you're coming down. It's just like chopping a tree. You may get some swings in, but you're coming down. How do you know, preacher? I've seen too many bar fights, friend. I've watched it happen too many times where a big guy thought he was something, and a little guy thought he was something, and eventually you always come down, no matter how big or bad we think we are. I know we think we're invincible, but we ain't. And those five boys will whip that guy, and you know what? Pretty soon he ain't bullying nobody on that block no more. Why? Strength through numbers. A good military gives you strength because of numbers, and if you have the right heart, you can have peace. Amen. But what we find here is, is there is no peace. It's just turmoil. Why? Because it goes from one conflict to the next. And you're starting to see that with America now. It's just going from one conflict to the next, all the way back to the Vietnam War. And uh, why? Because they have taken God out of it. And I'll tell you another thing. Now, here, now you may not, this is political, and this is uh, probably not much to do with Bible, but it is directly kind of about Bible. Uh, when you start putting your soldiers on trial for obeying orders, yeah. you no longer have a military. Uh -huh. See, the joke is in the military, now I've never been in the military. My father was in the military. My, my, I've got buddies that were in the military. Uh, I've got other family members that were in the military. I had a lot of family that was in the military, so we were on military bases all the time growing up. So I've been around the military, uh, even though I've never been in it. But the, uh, the joke is nowadays is uh, it's not a war crime the first time. I'll say that again for you. It's not a war crime the first time. In other words, the thing is, is anything you do is subject to be called a war crime. And you will be tried for it. So now as a soldier, that puts you in a bad place. You're there following orders to do what you're supposed to do. You know where that started? In 1945. The Nuremberg trials. Well, you say, well, those were Nazis. I understand they were Nazis. I understand they were, but you never should have put them on trial. Yeah. They obeyed the orders that they were giving in that uniform. Yeah. I'm not saying they were right, but then you set a precedent. Right. So now, your own people. Now you're trying your own people. Think about that for a minute. See? And we can take that right on down to the police department. Yeah, amen. <laughs> it's quiet in here this morning. It's just Sunday school. We're just studying the Bible. We're trying to see how nations react. And, and, and listen, policy and politics are part of the Bible. They're there. Look, watch what happens. It says in the 9th and 13th, verse 17, in the 9th and 13th year of Azra, king of Judah, began Mahan, or the Menahem, the son of Gadi, to reign over Israel, and he reigned 10 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Okay, so now we're establishing what he thinks and how he thinks as a leader. He does evil. He is anti-God. Amen? So if you've got a political leader that is anti-God, it's not going to fare well. You can write that down any way you want to. That's politics. That's just the way it is. Now notice what happens. And it says here, did evil in the sight of the Lord, and he departed not all his days from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel the sin. Now, here how, here's how those things dictate policy in a country. Notice what happens. And Pul, or Pul, the king of Assyria, came up against the land, and Menahem gave Pul a thousand talents of silver that his hand might be with him to confirm the kingdom in his hand. And Menahem exacted the money of Israel even of all the mighty men of wealth. Now what do they want to do in America today? They want to tax the rich. Why? To pay the king of Assyria to leave them alone. That's what they're doing. We're going to tax the rich, then we're going to take that money, and we're going to funnel it back in 
to these to these individuals that are uh, bringing or kicking up, you know, the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So the critical race theory and all these things, you know, that they're bringing up and defund the police and all this, we're going to take that, we're going to tax the ultra-rich, we need to tax all these corporations, and we're going to take that money and put it in these funds to, uh, so that way we can, we can uh, uh, make this more equitable. So I like to use words like equitable. You know, and, and so that, you know, you feel like, you know, that everything's good when they do this. But it's not. All they're doing is making certain individuals in those groups fat. Yeah. Fat being rich. Yeah. So, in other words, they want to take from the rich, bring it back over here, wash it through some different things, and then give it back to them, and they can say it's clean money. And you might as well just rob them. You say, well, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. Well... Let's just go back to there. How many of y'all remember the Black Lives Matter movement? I don't care about Black Lives Listen, I ain't, in the, I ain't in the race thing. I am talking about a political organization is all I'm talking about. Make sure you get that on tape in case somebody tries to say I'm a racist. All I am talking about is an organization. And this one just happens to be Black Lives Matter. It was founded by three ladies. Do you know who the three ladies are? If you don't, go back and study before you start accusing me of being racist. They were started by three women. And those three women all were communists. You can go back and study it. It's there on Google. Google is a wonderful thing. Just Google your little heart out and, and just go and read it. Don't take my word for it. What, I, what is my opinion like? They both stink, don't they? Okay. Don't take my opinion. Go back and read it. That one of those ladies took the money that was funneled into that organization that was taken by the government, yeah. on taxes and given to them to fund them. Yeah. And you know what she did with hers? Mm -hmm. It should have stayed in the organization to help the black community, is what it was supposed to be, which I would have had no problem with. Go back into the black community to help the black community to establish those things that happened during the riot where businesses were destroyed and they were burnt and all that. That money should have been funneled back into the black community where those businesses could have got their hand on that money at, at a 0% interest rate of some kind and so that they could open back up their businesses. That way they could service their community, right? That's a good thing. I don't have a problem with that. Anybody got, I don't have a problem with that. If it's done the right way, that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. People want to give that money. I don't think y'all steal it, but that's different. But she didn't do that. She went and bought her a $3 million home in a gated community. You say, that's a lie. Google it. Don't believe me. Don't take my word for it. Google it. What is that? That is just paying off the Assyrians, brother. What is that? Total depravity. That is saying one thing and doing another. And you can like it, you don't have to, that's fine. I mean, I can, I can name you a half a dozen of different organizations that, that do that same exact thing. And then certain individuals do not show up on the scene until chaos has ensued. They'll come in there, and then they'll show up, and they'll start preaching their version of whatever. <coughs> Why? Because they're trying to gain power and position. And that's what's happening. So he goes in there, verse 19, he gets the Assyrians so that they help him out, you know, and it confirms his kingdom in the hand. Why? It's because he's worried that internal strife, somebody's going to rise up and kill him. So he has to hire some thugs, the Assyrians, to help protect him and keep the law, keep the peace, so that he can maintain power. 